in a way, I am a treasure hunter in an in a, in a interesting sense of that because looking for the unusual thing, looking for things that, that have been lost or broken and bringing them back and, and thinking about them creatively because my world is about adornment. And so I love putting the students' pieces on uh, my vest and uh, celebrate their work. And so it's kind of like an, a traveling exhibition because I always change it quite often. I am trained as a goldsmith, diamonds and gold and platinum. But in the mid-60s, I began to take that particular skill of making and I began to work with materials that were discards. And so I'm upcycling material. And so I might be working with broken glass, a piece of tin, a pearl here, uh, a faceted stone there. I used to walk the alleys a lot with my wagon and gathering things out of the dump that I'd bring back. And in my garage, I had a shelf, so I put all the things that I, the treasures I would find. And so I had my, my little gallery in the garage. Instead of going off to scholarships to the Air Academy and also to Oklahoma or Nebraska to play football, I told my father that I wanted to go to the University of Kansas to study in the art department and think about this word jewelry. Came out of the studio at the University of Kansas at my last moment and I saw the sign in yellow and black letters, Fulbright Study Abroad. I was the only artist there. And I remember getting that envelope and realizing that, you know, you've got to take a, take a chance to make things happen. When applying for the Tiffany Grant, they were requiring to submit three pieces of work, and this was one of them. So it's sterling silver, uh, all flat sheet of silver, sawed out, uh, formed, and constructed into this cylinder, hollow. It's also a, a part of North Carolina uh, history of the decorative arts, as well as the Arts Council. Many of the museum directors have said, well, yeah, you were one of those early outlaws that took the risk to go differently and to swim upstream. When I had my 40th year retrospective, NC State with Charlotte Brown created the opportunity and then it traveled to never different museums and it did uh, find its way to the Smithsonian. What makes an artist, I feel, curiosity. Many of the tools and techniques I work with daily are, are tools and techniques that's been handed down uh, from generation to generation and centuries to centuries. Working with the students are a real treat, and I have the joy every day to meet with them uh, weekly and daily uh, and to watch them grow at the same time, share with them technical things firms are looking for, not another person with an MBA uh, degree piece of paper, but they're really looking for people who can come into their firm or into their organizations who are good problem solvers. So I think that the, the opportunities for the creative person today in business is, uh, is, has been healthy. Museums are very important because they are the holders of, of our history. There's 29 museums around the world that have pieces in, my, uh, in their collection. And the Victorian Albert Museum, if you walk into their permanent collection that's out all the time, you will see a piece that's there. And there is an exhibition getting ready to take place in India that uh, is about recycled or upcycled materials. And just now, the, there's a glass jewelry exhibition that has been traveling uh, in Europe and in America, just finished closing in, uh, over in Winston-Salem. I came to North Carolina from Florida my first time, and I went to the western part, to Asheville, to teach at Penland School of Crafts, and that was in the early 60s. To come to be a part of the eastern part of the state has been very uh, rich. In a way, this is my sketchbook. Uh, my drawing materials, I, I put them, bring them together uh, and, and begin to assemble things. Making order out of chaos uh, is really about about this world here. Maybe my life is like that. Maybe it's my life is chaotic and sometimes trying to make order out of it.